Discussion. After getting tourism back on its feet, we look at hotels as destinations in a quarantined world and after. How many of us have travelled and planned a trip but have been very wary of checking into a hotel? The central air conditioning, the carpets, it's all very daunting. Well, I speak with Mr. Kapil Chopra, founder and CEO of the Postcard Hotel. Mr. Saurabh Rai, preferred hotels and resorts, he's executive vice president of South and Southeast Asia, Middle East, Africa and Australia and Mr. Sonu Shivdasani, CEO of Suneva. To better understand, are Indian travellers and international travellers going to be checking into hotels? What kind of hotels are really going to work in the post-pandemic world? And what do hotels need to do to convince customers that they are safe? We begin with our first discussion for the day. Hotels as a destination in the quarantined world and after. And I have an amazing panel. And that it's ironically, we're all meeting virtually, but uh, uh, my panel is joining me from across the world. We have with us Mr. Sonu Shivdasani, CEO and founder of uh, Suniva, who's joining us from Maldives. Mr. Kapil Chopra, founder and CEO of Postcard Hotels, joining from my neighborhood, Gurgaon. And then we have Mr. Saurabh Rai, joining us from Dubai. He's the Executive Vice President of Preferred Hotels and Resorts. So I want to begin by making a confession that I was trying to uh, look, book a weekend getaway, uh, a hotel in Gurgaon, and I called up the hotel and they told me they are booked for the entire weekend. And this is a, it's a very premium property. So I, and I was honestly, I said, how can that be possible? So this is not the first property I checked out. There was another property I checked out at Agra that was also booked. So what's really happening? I mean, we are talking, we are reading reports and you know, we are, we know that the hotel industry has been very adversely affected. What's, what's going on? Are hotels running empty? Are they running full? What's the new normal for the hospitality sector? Let me begin uh, by uh, uh, getting a couple to answer, answer this question. Okay, so uh, thank you, um, uh, Shweta, for having us uh, on the panel. And it's always great to uh, you know, see Sonu and uh, Saurabh, uh, both gentlemen that I've known for many years, actually. Um, and, uh, and the answer to that question is very simple, really. Uh, so it's, it's kind of... Uh, I'd, I'd give that answer in segments. So if you're today running a luxury business hotel in a city, uh, then actually your revenues are down 80 to 90%, if not more. Uh, but that is the severe impact that luxury business hotels have had in India, at least. Um, the second point really being why, because people are not traveling and uh, only very essential travel is happening. Business is down. People have moved to a new way of working. So they actually don't need to travel too much and they're avoiding travel. So due to which... Uh, these hotels have been severely impacted. Also, the fact that 25% of business in these hotels was coming from the MICE segment, which is meetings, incentives, and corporate events, which is kind of moved to zero. So luxury business hotels, if you're operating, you are kind of really running 80 to 90% below last year, same time. So very severely impacted. If you are now running a leisure hotel, or like you said, so a lot of people in India have been stuck at their home since uh, 23rd of March. Um, so now on the weekends, they're trying to go away to any hotel and just, just relax. Uh, two reasons for that. One, there is what you call pent up, um, you know, frustration staying at home. Uh, second point being on weekends, hotels are extremely reasonable because they're kind of empty on the weekdays. So all the luxury business hotels have kind of become staycation hotels in cities. So where people just go and unwind. Uh, and that is why the weekend occupancy is higher. Uh, and the rates are very, very attractive for people to actually take a break. Coming to the third category is leisure hotels. Leisure hotels are slightly doing better if you can drive, uh, but now even by air, uh, actually that, that segment is recovering much faster. But if you're running a leisure hotel, you generally do, are in a much better shape uh, in specific pockets in the country because people um, you know, started moving out two months back and, uh, and actually what's really happened is uh, the average length of stay in leisure hotels have gone up significantly. So leisure is doing uh, much better. It's already back to 50, 60% of the pre-COVID levels. Uh, that's what's happening in leisure hotels. So this is how I see all the segments playing out uh, in the Indian market. Okay, let me bring in Sonu here. Sonu, you've been uh, in Maldives for 
almost six, seven months now. Is it, so when, you know, uh, uh, in Delhi or in India, in fact, there is, it's very difficult to do social distancing. There's a lot of paranoia, but is it the same, you know, from where you are? Like, is it as bad? Are, is the hotels industry impacted as severely in the Maldives considering social distancing is much easier to do there and probably hygiene is also and hygiene stand, standards are relatively easier to maintain. So, so has, the, has, has the industry in the Maldives been affected to the same extent that Kapil yeah. described? So but before, 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 I, before I go on to asking, answering that question, I'd like to um, build on what Kapil said. Um, there is complete diversity in the hospitality sector and I think that corporate travel um, whilst mice and weddings um, may have reduced temporarily, uh, for corporate travel, I think that's a permanent reduction, perhaps not to the extent of 80 to 90 percent. But personally, my experience, my travel will halve because what you find is technologies are there and the adoption of technologies takes time. So, for example, I'll give you an example. It, you wouldn't believe it, but it took 30 years for factories to introduce machines that were powered by electricity 30 years after Thomas Edison um, invented the light bulb. Uh, it took so long. And, and it, was, it was a technology was, that was there to drive incredible efficiencies for these factories, but they continued with their steam engine. And I think it's been a bit like with that with Zoom. The technology has been there, but it takes 20 days to form a new habit. And I think slightly more to break old habits because we get used to um, our things. And I've I've, I've, I've never had more Zoom calls than now, just like what we're doing now. And it's a technology that I'm so comfortable with. And I find that I can get a lot done. I can be very effective. And so my personal experience is that my corporate travel will halve. And I think in the short term, that's obviously going to affect urban hotels, very dependent on corporate travel. But what it will do in the medium term, once people get over the fear, because I think the biggest challenge with COVID has been the fear itself, to paraphrase um, FDR during his inaugural speech, um, the fear itself has actually caused more damage than the virus. And, um, and, and I think um, once we get over the fear, then cities will do very well because um, there'll be more leisure travelers coming in. There's fewer corporate travelers taking those valuable hotel rooms like London, Paris, New York, etc. cetera. And um, that will allow, the, the leisure traveler is much more productive uh, and um, for the city because they spend, they go out, they go to the theater, the restaurants museums, whereas the businessman goes to a meeting, has a soup um, uh, in the hotel, does his work, flies out the next morning, spends very little, very little consumption in the city. So I think this in the medium term will be very good for these beautiful urban locations, the key um, gateway capitals um, in the future. So um, I'm to, to, to touch on what, what Kavit Kapil was saying, and I think this point about six months of confinement and pent up demand, we're seeing that as well. And the only restriction has been governments restricting travel from certain countries into, um, into our, our destinations. And the pent up demand is such, and the frustration is such, that I hear people now talking about it being unconstitutional, uh, um, especially in Aust Australia as a perfect example of this, and onerous conditions on returning. Um, so with us, um, travel um, started slowly, it was anemic, but we actually see ourselves, our last quarter, October, November, December, all three resorts will be up on 19. So greater than 2019. We already have double on the books for October at Snebukiri. So Snebukiri is a slight domestic issue because the Thai borders remain closed, but we've, had, we've got, and the Thais love to travel. So there's a huge pent up domestic Thai demand, which will generate more revenues for us in October than we would have got if the borders had been open. But also in the Maldives, um, here where I'm at Snebukiri, we're about 20, 30% up on the books compared with what we had last year. And we're forecasting to be about 20% higher for October. December, I think, will be an amazing December. The, the bookings are starting to come in because slowly, slowly, the demand has been there, but it's been the restriction. And slowly, slowly, the restrictions are falling away. And I think what's um, our benefit here in the Maldives and here at Suneva is that we operate one island, one resort. And in our particular case, um, we're, I think, the only hotel company or very few hotels uh, companies to actually have our own testing. So we have a real-time PCR test machine from Roche we're testing all our hosts, um, all our employees, um, twice before they arrive, uh, you know, once on arrival, on a second time, if they come from a local island where we know, which we know is COVID-free. And the Maldives is largely COVID-free. Apart from Mali, there's no community spread throughout the country. And it's, it's really 1,200 isolation centers, not 1,200 islands, 1,200 isolation centers. So it's, 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 it's a perfect 
context uh, to stop this virus. So our hosts who come from local islands tested on arrival, again on day seven, and um, foreign hosts tested three times and they're only allowed out dealing with guests and other hosts after, after their second test uh, and provided it's negative, of course. And all our guests are tested on arrival. They have to uh, remain in the privacy of their private villa and beach and pool uh, for a maximum of 24 hours until we get the results. Because we have the machine, it's processed very quickly. So this one island, one resort, COVID-free environment where people are not served with people with masks um, is, is, is very, very welcome. And um, so that's why I think we've seen great demand. And so there is that great diversity in travel, um, urban, urban leisure, uh, one island, remote leisure, corporate, and um, they're all going to be impacted in different ways. Wow. Uh, Saurabh, uh, bring you in here. How is it looking in Dubai? Is, are things returning close to normal? Or uh, would you say the situation is very similar to what we're witnessing in India right now? Sure, thanks, Shweta. It's a pleasure to be sharing the panel with uh, Kapil and Sonu, and a lot of great content has uh, already been shared in here. So I think firstly, a quick comment on what you said about the report you cited that calls out the recovery going all the way out to 2023. I think the you know, good old feisty uh, power of human resilience cannot be underestimated. We've been through uh, many such crises before, uh, whether it was the SARS or the financial bust, and we saw how the recovery came through pretty much within the 12 to 18 month uh, window, right? And we have already started to, to see some green shoots in here and what you experienced over the weekend when you called these resorts or hotels to book is not an exception. This is what uh, we are experiencing all over. Let me pick up, because we have hotels around the world, let me pick up the segmentation that Kapil spoke about um, and, and add some more color to it. If you look at destinations like pick up, you know, Odebor in India or Dubai or Morocco or some of the Indian Ocean resorts in here, we have seen localized and regional demand come to rescue and properties are consistently running. We have hotels within our portfolio that are actually running about 50 to 60% year-to-date occupancies. And th those kind of green shoots and inspirational signs is not what gets picked up in what the consumers are reading, right? So the fear factor is actually depressing the reality of some kind of travel within the region that is taking place. For sure, segments of business like uh, we already spoke about, which are all to do with these uh, uh, urban corporate travel or meeting business-centric hotel are going to have a bigger challenge at hand. But that also brings a big reality reality to the fore that many hotels have almost over relied on accommodation as a revenue churner, right? There has to be a big shift. And the fact that the resort and regional getaways are doing better underlines the demand and growing demand for experiential travel, right? And I think uh, no one knows this better than, and, and, than Sonu and Kapil in here. I'd invite them to talk a little bit more about how the concept of ex creating experiences in that is now the big draw and almost hedge your bets. So even if you look at, so this was about the, about the uh, resort properties, but even if you look at city center hotels, I'll give you a live example. You asked a question about Dubai. One of our partner hotels in Dubai, the Palazzo Versace in here has actually closed a month at 90% month to date occupancy. And that is on the back of a diversified experience, right? Where you're playing and appealing to multiple segments, where you come in for a city break. And it's not just about a, a, a well-detailed accommodation experience, but it is beautifully overlaid with a very independent and wholesome food and beverage and gourmet experience. That is then overlaid with a very well thought out junior guest program, you know, which becomes inviting for the kids who become the decision makers and they say, we want to go and stay at these properties. So even for the urban properties that are able to connect a little bit better with the changing segmentation of business and are open and early adopters of uh, responding to the changing segmentation by delivering an urban hotel experience, they're going to find themselves recovering better, faster, stronger than the ones who hold on to the traditional model. Okay. Um, yeah, I could not agree more with um, what, um, yeah, what Sarab just said. Um, th thank you. I, 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 just to, to share, 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 share my experience on some of the points you touched about, this idea of experiential travel, the importance of creating content for kids. 
Um, I was in fact going fact, to come to that. I was going to come to that. That right. how is this making you rethink? You know your business models. How is this making right. you rethink what you offer to your uh, clients? Do you expect? Or do you are you already witnessing a change in consumption behavior? Uh, how is this going to disrupt the hospitality sector? So th that, well, that that's something yeah. that I'm very curious. About. I think COVID's actually not forced us to rethink, uh, but actually uh, accentuated our philosophy and values. So if I can step back, our core purpose is slow life. Um, essentially, we're offering our guests luxuries whilst minimizing our impact on their health and enhancing their, their well-being, their wellness, so, um, and their health. So, um, um, so um, and, and sort of reducing our impact on, their, on the environment, I mean, sorry. So, um, so sustainable wellness and, and, um, and uh, luxury have always gone hand in hand with and I think COVID has accentuated the importance of both sustainability and health. Mm -hmm. And we've done that by questioning what really is a luxury, because what we've found is that um, the context of the wealth of the successful has changed. Historically, our guests were the landed gentry, living in urban environments, fresh air, fresh food, space, privacy. Today, they're urban, uh, where some of what the successful took for granted in the past um, are now rare. Uh, fresh air and fresh food in an urban context are almost impossible. Space and privacy are a huge premium. So hence, inspiring a lifetime of rare experiences, being able to walk barefoot for a week, um, having um, a salad was plucked from the garden that morning. You might be one of the richest men in India, but can you watch a movie where the stars are not just on the screen or see the stars through one of the largest telescopes in the areas we operate with someone like Buzz Aldrin, the second man on the moon, um, explaining to you or our, our resident astronomer that there's a universe out there or having a shower, listening to the hotel's Bose sound system with um, your favorite song already downloaded by our team on the hotel's iPod, but seeing the full moon on the stars. You know, those are things you can't do in an urban context. And what COVID has done is it's, 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 it's denied people of the benefits of an urban environment. You can't go out to restaurants, you can't engage with other people, but it's accentuated some of the challenges of urbanization. And we've had growing urbanization by 2030, the prediction is that 70% of the world's population will be urban. And COVID has accentuated the limitations, um, the space, the privacy, the fresh air, the fresh food. So what we've been doing for 25 years and our philosophy has just become all the more important and all the more stronger. And of course, wellness has been at the, at the key of Seneva when we created Six Senses and put some of the first spas in, 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 in a lot of Asian countries, including Dubai with our Six Senses spa and the Madina. We'd always focused on wellness and now it's, it's, it's more important than ever. So, so I don't think it's a question of coping or redirecting our energies. It's the fact that COVID has brought out what we felt were long-term trends and just accelerated them. Are you ready for Orisha? A journey into the heart of eternal wisdom awaits you. Engage with our monuments of peace. Rekindle faith. Immerse in cultural expressions. Come, explore our timeless secrets. Come to Orisha, India's best kept secret. मैंने जो कुछ दिन गुजरात में बिताए वो उम्र भर मेरे साथ रहेंगे गीर का शेर आंखों से आंखें मिलाकर पूछता है कौन हो बेटा तुम तुम्हारे जैसे बहुत देखे मैंने सोमनाथ के मंदिर में शिव के सामने नतमस्तक होकर मैं अपने सभी डायलॉग भूल गया धोला वीरा और लोथल में हमारी सभ्यता के पद चिन्ह द्वारका में कृष्ण की लीला और साबरमती में बापू की आत्मा कहां मिलेगा इतना सब कुछ एक साथ में कुछ दिन तो गुजारी है गुजरात में कपल आई वांट टू ब्रिंग यू इन हियर हाउ डू यू डू यू सी द इंडियन ट्रैवलर यू नो 
asking so i agree with, um, so you know i agree with sonu so you know you really look at his um, you know the way that he uh, kind of built up six senses and he built up uh, uh, you know soneva so i always say when the when you know when i would move out from obroy to do the postcard hotel one of the big things was uh, there were three companies that i really thought to change the way people holiday yeah different in different styles i thought one was uh, soneva and six senses that sonu founded one was and i've said it in enough uh, interviews so it's just not because sonu is there okay and uh, the second was uh, for me aman resorts uh, which changed the way resorts should be built and experienced and the third for me was one and only which brought in lifestyle and a different way to holiday so but but all three had very different philosophies in operating and uh, whatever and 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 when i was trying to do the postcard hotel the whole idea was to create uh, uh, three four things which also like kind of helped us and uh, you know kind of accelerated the entire uh, adoption of the hotel so i call it like when demonetization happened in india it was a paytm moment everybody moved to a mobile wallet for us something like that's happened with the postcard hotel reasons are very simple all the hotels are small and when we launched i still remember our first press conference two years back when we launched the hotel we said in our view small is big and we are trying to build for india first now we never anticipated something like this will happen but now people want to go to smaller hotels you don't want to go to a 200 room hotel and pick up a plate in a restaurant and say god who else has picked up this plate and you don't want to go to a pool where 100 people have already been or or swam in that pool so how do you create a very private experience in a smaller hotel and you know so we've been fortunate from that perspective that i'll give you real numbers so july was when goa opened and bhutan is still not open because it went into a lockdown again but when it opened for a month and the local demand was great and sri lanka where we have another hotel is still a bit slow but let me talk about goa for one second july when we opened we were 85% below last year so 85% below last year that's what we did in july in august we were 34% over last year okay and please remember that if you had to go to goa you needed an rt pcr test so you needed to be covid negative to even enter the city and in september we are 118% over last year and at this rate by the 31st of october i will be over what we did last year uh from 1st of april to 31st october in spite of not operating for close to 3 3 and a half months and the reason for that is very simple suddenly the entire demand has got consolidated and actually come to us because we are small we are intimate we built for india first so if you are in india and every year you went in a private jet or you booked nice business class or first class tickets to europe or the us you spent 20 30 lakhs there you kind of where else do you go in india to so you go to goa now less a number of cases more private you can book the postcard hotel out people are booking the entire hotel average length of stay has gone from 2.3 nights in goa because otherwise it was go on a friday come back on a sunday or a monday it's gone from 2.3 to 9.1 nights but like i said i think um, like soneva is when when sonu said that october november december is looking good uh, means we can see it so these kind of hotels which are very highly focused on experiential travel which are very highly focused on sourcing locally uh, which are highly focused on a very high level of personalized experience and very high level of privacy um, maybe the only ones which will do very well and kind of deliver month on month uh, Uh, double digit or even triple digit returns of growth over last year uh, okay. that's the way that i see that what's happened in goa so i'm sensing a lot more optimism than one uh, you know gets if one reads a report so 2023 is a far fetched number you you think that the recovery is going to be much faster no. it's already underway no. yeah, yeah 100% so i think the the recovery is going to be much faster and and sort of said it very nicely that you know generally people are pretty resilient and people will move back much faster and i agree with sonu when he says that fear is bigger than uh, actually the disease itself um, but i also think uh, that but you know one thing will is actually changed and every time a pandemic or a very big event happens something changes yeah and the thing that's changed is what sonu picked up that corporate travels change forever means just think about it if i had yeah, to go meet somebody in mumbai yeah. and i said and i would have said uh, six months back uh, you know can we do a zoom call he would have felt insulted saying yeah, okay. he thinks i i it's not good for him we're doing all our events on zoom yeah. we would have been yeah, traveling so, all over the country so that, uh, but yeah yeah so, so that is a very big behavior change so now if six months down the line you would tell somebody you know i'd love to talk to you can we get a quick zoom call to finish this up uh, you won't have to travel so 
uh, you know, I was on a flight pretty much every week. Um, and I don't think uh, I'm going to get on a flight maybe once a month, maybe twice a month maximum. So, so I think, so I think that segment's totally changed. And a lot of business hotels like Saurabh was mentioning of what the hotel in Dubai was doing would have to really revisit their business models in a, in a very significant way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I think Soru not being in a city and we not being in a city and, 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 you know, both our brand philosophy saying that we will not open city hotels ideally uh, is, is actually helping us. Not that we, we, we plan for it, but it's just that the way we saw our brands to come together and, and kind of create a different narrative of sustainable, responsible luxury. Okay. So just to kind of come in here and add a thought to uh, what Kapil just said, one, one yeah. segment that's changed forever is the, is, is the corporate travel. Um, but another segment that is uh, that's changing for good, I hope, is uh, uh, the, the, the leisure experiential purpose-led travel, right? I think the pandemic has brought forward a very, very strong moment of realization and not to get philosophical about it, but life is short and you know, it's given us uh, a, a wake up call in making now count and not wait it out for tomorrow, right? So this is in our social circle, business circle, industry peership and, and guest fraternity, there is definitely, and we've, we've run surveys of our loyalty base of I prefer, and we've asked our end patrons and consistent message that we are hearing from the end traveler, as well as the luxury travel advisor fraternity, is that the demand and the recognition for a purpose-led, mission-oriented, sustainability focus, where elements of connecting with the community, giving back to society, good guest, good, good host philosophy, are scoring higher than they ever did before. So going forward, definitely what you see right now is being, is being, is being uh, bad repped as uh, revenge travel at what, has, what have used. It is true that international borders aren't open, so the domestic, uh, uh, you know, domestic resorts are gaining, but I believe there is going to be a continued trend of such experiential connected travel picking up even post the pandemic where the value that's attached to these uh, memory creating connecting experiences is going to be here to stay. Absolutely. I think it's, um, right. can I just build on what Sarab's yeah, just very said? Quickly, um, very quickly, yeah, we just have to wind yeah. up so very quickly. Yes, no, absolutely. So I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I think, um, uh, but I, I think there are some guests that are still out for just the inspiring experiences. For, what, for them, what sells it is dinner on the sandbank or the Sonu's picnic where you go fishing in the morning, you catch the fish and you go to a private island, the chef's there and you, you prepare the fish yourself and wrap it in a banana leaf, dig it in the ground, um, et cetera. You know, those, those are more, you know, or, or a dolphin cruise where you see the dolphins. I think for, for some of our guests, that's still the priority. But what I am noticing is more, more guests are looking into what we're doing on the sustainability side and asking more and enjoying it. And also in asking for content for their kids. So we recycle 90% of our waste. Uh, we, we're like a, uh, a public utility, uh, you know, we're, we're, a, we're like a city in, in the Maldives in that uh, we generate our power, we desalinate our water, we treat our waste. We, re we recycle 90%. Uh, the food and the cardboard turns into compost, the branches we turn into charcoal. 83% uh, of our non-structural bricks are made from waste materials. Styrofoam is used for isolation, although we've reduced that quantity, aluminum into hooks for our, our villas, a glass. We ban branded water, but we still have uh, the Chateau Ikem or the Margot, which we turn into works of great beauty. And what we found is um, a lot of the guests are enjoying going to our Eco Centro and they're liking the content we're creating for children. So we have this fantastic elaborate children's facility at Suneva Pushi with, which is 1,500 square meters designed by the children of our repeat guests. Because 95, 55% of our revenues comes from return guests. So it's designed by them, but what the parents are enjoying more is what happens outside the den, such as a lesson from our waste to wealth manager, you know, where we're recycling 90% of our waste or the permaculturalist uh, teaching how to uh, create the compost, make biochar, put it into the soil to enrich it, create a, a raised bed, the symbiotic relationship of plants or the mycologist who's growing the mushrooms or the astronomer at the observatory showing the stars to the kids, you the marine to, We just want to travel to Maldives now. <laughs> it sounds... Sorry, so that's funny. true. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> but Sonu as, well, Shweta, I must, I must admit, I'm a, I'm a victim of Sonu's spell because my, my daughters have pulled me back to Soneva five times over and we can't wait to go back oh exactly God. for all that, that uh, so Sonu's lovely. talking about in here. <laughs> I'm sorry we've right. run out of time, but, uh, you know, uh, we just hope that things are better. COVID becomes history soon and we are able to take that wonderful trip to the Maldives for sure. And to Goa, of course. And for to sure, and for sure, can't wait. I have spent a few days in Gujarat. They will stay with me for my life. The king of the sea is coming from the eyes of the sea. Who are you, son? I think you are like a lot of people. In the temple of Somnath, I will be in front of Shiv. I will forget all of my dialogue. धोला वीरा और लोथल में हमारी सभ्यता के पदचिन्ह द्वारका में कृष्ण की लीला और साबरमती में बापू की आत्मा कहा मिलेगा इतना सब कुछ एक साथ में कुछ दिन तो गुजारी गुजरात में India's best kept secret. So it will be experiential travel over business travel. Well, many thanks, Mr. Chopra, Mr. Saurabh Rai, and Mr. Sonu Shivdasani for that very amazing perspective. We, of course, look forward to traveling and traveling with full enthusiasm very soon. <laughs>